695 new features and fixes have been implemented in the latest release of Blender Beam. What's up friends, welcome back to Beam Voice. As you got already used to, at each second month, we get a new Blender Beam release. And there have been two months since the last release in July. So there you have it, we got this one. And this is a big one. As you already heard, 695 things to be fixed in a software is not a small feat, I can assure you that. I just need to start this at the bottom of this page and say thank you to everyone contributing. Thank you, Dion, you are doing an unbelievable job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre. You can see, guys, what this means. Andre has had 155 commits. This is amazing. This guy has worked full time because more people have started to contribute. So this is huge. Thank you, thank you very much, Andre. Sigma Dimensions, yes. Thank you very much, Asin, for your contribution also. I'm really looking forward to discover and to dive deeper in the 4 and 5D functionalities and new improvements that you have been working on. I can't wait for it. Riley Wong, 311, has worked on implementing the brick schema in Blender Beam. Thank you very much, Riley Wong. Thank you very much, Gorgeous. You are also doing an amazing job. Thomas, although there are only 24 commits only, I assume that these are critical ones at the core of IFC OpenShell. So thank you very much, Thomas, for everything you do. I really appreciate your work. Dirk, I don't know who Dirk is, but thank you very much, Dirk or Bridge. Carlos, thank you very much, Carlos, for everything you did uh, implementing the BCF functionalities for IDS reporting inside the Blender Beam interface and everything else, the IDS converter and also your courses because you are training people, you are helping people and promoting Open Beam all the time. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Trashman, I don't know who you are, but thank you very much for your contribution. Bruno, thank you very much, Bruno. Your contribution is also very much appreciated. Dushyant Basin, I don't know who are you, but thank you very much for your contribution. AX, thank you very much for your contribution also. And also for your chats, the very nice chats we had about uh, automating generation with Python. Bruno, again, of course, you keep doing an amazing job. Thank you very much. Christopher Anderson, thank you very much also for your contribution. I don't know who you are. I did not see your contribution before, but thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Ryan. Of course, thank you very much for your contribution. You are doing an amazing job. You are also promoting a lot. So thank you very much for all of that. Ketan or Chitan, thank you very much for that as well. Christoph, thank you to you as well. Jesus Bill, also, thank you very much for everything you'll do as well. Orion Set, Wei Yang, Arun, Luz Paz, and SMR02. Thank you very much for this. Now, I will not go here and start bragging myself, but thank you very much for all the donations that we can see here. I don't know why I am here, if, if this is alphabetical or by the size of the donations, but I can assure you that there have been some donations and I thank you very much for this first and foremost because you uh, have actually joined the IDS Masterclass and I donated more than 50% from the money earned in that uh, IDS Masterclass. I don't want to brag with that. I'm just trying to explain to you how much of more of an impact I can make when you are when you are supporting me with these products because this is my first goal to help and contribute to Blender Beam and to IFC OpenShell as much as possible. So thank you very much for your support and thank you very much for your future support and future help because let me drop this bomb right now. We are working in launching two more masterclasses and on top of the IDS masterclass that I will have with Menomekis, there is another amazing guy that we will start working together with. And that's the IFC architect, guys. So whoever is interested to accelerate their learning journey and to learn actually to use Blender Beam for real in their real jobs, this course is for you. We are going to take it slow. So this is going to be an introduction course for how to use Blender for existing architects who are using other tools. And it's going to be, of course, affordable. So stay tuned for that because in the next few weeks, you will get to see it. Let me also do a shout out for Planibim and Sven Amiet is the same. Sven is working for this company and he is supporting OpenVim a lot. Thank you, Sven, for uh, joining the IDS Masterclass and thank you for 
contributing through your company as well. Let me also give a shout out to Patrick McNulty, Giancarlo De Marco and Moritz Amberger for joining our first masterclass. I really appreciate your support. And as you can see, our support pours back into the community, into the products. And I'm very, very happy and grateful that I can contribute this way. Thank you very much. And also, thank you very much for becoming the founders of the Beam Voice Open Beam community, where we have weekly live meetings. And if you don't get to participate to them, then you get the recordings. And in these meetings, of course, we go through IDS and other Open Beam stuff. So for now, this community is closed, but let me drop another bomb. This is also going to be announced somewhere in October, I guess. It will be open for a brief period of time, I think. And at the moment, I'm thinking for a limited amount of people. So if you think that you want to accelerate your OpenBeam learning journey, then this is the right place to be in. The place for motivated people to learn OpenBeam and to boost their careers and their projects. That's it. We focus on the pragmatic part. How can you learn this and implement it to get a return on your investment as quick as possible? This is the focus of this community and we grow together here. So I hope some of you will be interested in this and I'm really looking forward to meet you there. Now, until then, let's dial back a little bit and let's go quickly over the improvements in this release. This is a big one and I'll try to compress it as much as possible. Maybe you saw my latest videos and few of them are covering the latest improvements in the user interface. I think this is the largest leap when it comes in the popularity of Blender Beam. I do not doubt that a lot of people will start using it because it's so much easier to use now because we got these improvements in the interface. Amazing. So there are many, many, many things here. We can see that this beam layout has been improved. Now, when you jump in, this is much easier to navigate. Here on the right-hand side, you'll have this, all the tools and everything that you need. And here on the left-hand side, you'll have the structure of the project. We don't have any import and export anymore because as you already know, Blender is an IFC native tool. And that means that you actually need to save instead of exporting, right? And now we got also in this menu, new IFC project and open IFC project here in the file menu at the top left hand side. Here we got a huge boost. We got all these things in the same place as you already know maybe. And we don't need to scroll through this menu right here to the left hand side. Now we have everything here and you can choose either to click on these icons or to click on this on the first one here and you will see a list with all of these as you can see here actually and choose which one of them you want to use at this point. Personally, I use mostly project overview, object information and quality and coordination. Then this is the last video I posted about. This toolbar has been improved a lot. Like for beginners, this is going to be much easier to go through. You get these elements to start with, native IFC elements. You don't model any blender meshes that you will need to convert. You just start by importing this and then if you need to do anything, you can edit it very quickly, very easily. This one, actually, I need to say that this is the first time I see this. I did not click here. I did not see this menu right here. But I don't know, maybe there is a way that you can drag this. If you want to expand this menu right here to see what is the text for it. Because in this case, although it's quite intuitive, you can hover over these icons and you'll get the text, which will explain to you what that is. Or you can make this wider and you will see everything here. By the way, sorry for going back to the master classes, but if you would like to be first to hear about this and to get the biggest discounts that you are going to ever get, you should go to the Beam Voice newsletter. You will find it wherever you go in the description of the YouTube videos, on my LinkedIn page, wherever you go, Beam Voice on LinkedIn, you will find in any post link to newsletter. Subscribe to the newsletter because that will give you the largest discount on any products that you you will see from me in the future. Now let's go back here. Uh, the old annotation panel has been removed in favor of the new workspace annotation tool. Yeah, I did not use this before, so I don't have any idea how this works, but very briefly, definitely the experience for uh, making drawings has improved a lot. So you have it there. Drawing and modeling improvements. Of course, this got better. There are three big changes in drawings. First, coplanar 
edges for meshes and tessellations are now dissolved by default. This makes using meshes as a geometry type much more practical in drawings generations. That's good. And secondly, project line work can now be independently styled from cut line work and cut or projection files. This allows you to style a lot of 2D line work where it was previously impossible. And the third one, there is now support for reflecting ceiling plans. There is still a lot of testing to be done, but this is one of the major things holding back usage in basic drawing sets. So yes, this drawing looks quite good actually. So if you need this functionality, it got better and it will keep getting better. So just start learning and using it because it's for free. And you will have a huge advantage if you start learning as quick as possible, because then you might use, I don't know, maybe you want to use it for your own projects on the side, or if you want to, I don't know, to find any clients on the side of your job. I don't know, maybe you can do that, right? You won't need to pay a license for Revit or something. You can do this with Blender Beam. Give it a try. You will need some time to invest to learn how to do it, but eventually it will be a worthwhile investment of your time. Dimensions can now have background fields for readability. Yeah, and other things. Sorry for this. I'm not crazy about drawings. I know there are still many people depending and relying on them, but I try to promote other workflows and other ways of working and we are focusing model-based and I focus also on that because I think it's a waste of time. No offense. I don't mean to offend you, please. I respect you. I know there are different um, reasons why you might still need to use drawings. I'm just telling you why I am focusing on this. Because I see that we can live without drawings. We can work. We can build using the models. And by the way, it's been actually two months since I actually, for the first time in my career, we had some structures built just by using 3D models. And we also ordered materials using the 3D model from IFC files and we have also used on site and now at the moment we are using two quality assurance our engineers are using tools and checking works that have been done on site using the 3D model so yeah uh, MEP services and distribution system modeling in this release mainly there are four tools currently available for MEP the ad fitting, I don't know anything about MEP guys, I'm sorry, I'm not the MEP guy. I hope I'll find somebody who can cover this for me in the future, who can teach me more or yeah, who can collaborate with me because I'm not that guy. If you are there in my audience, don't hesitate to reach out to me. We can see how we could work together maybe. You can also regenerate distribution elements and so on. So there are improvements for MEP also, of course, for everything else. But I think the focus is on the thing where the demand is higher, right? And where there are more users, which is quite natural. But I'm sure that everything eventually will become gradually better and better. Oh, let me tell you, I love this, Dion. Thank you very much. I've seen the development of this live. I was in the meeting with him when he implemented this. When he checked this, he implemented the BCF stuff because it was not working. The reports have become so much better. I have another video about that. So go and watch that there. But this is so much better. The report is much clearer. Now this summary is accurate and it shows everything. And here is split it on chapters on different specifications. Here, what do we have here? Detailed documentation for programmers parsing IFC geometry. I'm not a programmer either, although I understand some code and so on, but yeah, it's definitely, maybe it has become easier for them to access. Standard US steel profile library. Thousands of standardized steel profiles are now available in a US profile library. This is an addition to existing EU and Australian steel libraries. There you have it. So there are already, these profiles are implemented in here. You can just start using them. I'm talking about you, structural engineers. Yes, Blender Beam, it's awesome for you. What are you waiting for? New search panels. Okay, this is another thing that I covered. The search group has become much nicer and also coloring by property. This is amazing. I love this. It's so easy to find things. You can see what is your building element proxy? If you should have any building element proxy or not. So I love that. And you see all the classes that are actually used. Then have been some improvements with IFC CSV over our meetup meeting uh, with OSARC. Unfortunately, the recording of that has been unfortunate and it was recorded in the browser. Meanwhile, Dion has shown his desktop so unfortunately we did not post it on uh, youtube but we are going to have a short meeting where we will cover that and uh, we'll post it later on so yeah 
it's still going to be there. IFC CSV can also now export to three formats, CSV, XLSX, and ODS. Wow, this is amazing because I, I wanted actually to export to Excel because now exporting to CSV, if I'm using Excel, then I need to prepare. Sometimes it was not working to convert or it takes some more work to format the CSV to XLS. Sometimes. Very, very nice. Fundamental features built for using Brick Schema. Yeah, this is amazing. Riley Wong has done an amazing job. Critical bug fixes. Yeah. The ID tracking system has also been redesigned, which should fix a number of highly subtle undo bugs. Yeah. Construction sequencing and planning upgrades. I'm really looking forward to this and we hope to have Yas on the next OS Arc meetup where he will show us how to use these tools. And so much more. There are so many things here. I will leave a link in the description below. So please head to it and read through all this list if you are interested to. Otherwise, just go and download the latest Blender BM version and knock yourself out. Try to test it and enjoy yourself using these amazing new features. Let me say one more time, thank you very much, everyone contributing here. I appreciate you very much. I am grateful for all the hard work you are putting in. And I am very happy to live in these times and enjoy this development. Thank you very much for all the efforts you are doing. Have a good one and see you next time.